Hey, gun people. Yeah, um, everybody's been asking about this uh, Amber Geiger, the female cop, I'm sorry, the female white cop, as she's known, uh, that shot the black man who was convicted of murder. Uh, one of the key witnesses for the prosecution and for the civil trial was shot and killed. Now, most people may go, man, that's got to be a hit. Look, you're talking about Dallas. Dallas is run by the left, for the left, liberal policies. Uh, I mean, crime's out of control. They're always screaming gun control. I mean, for somebody to get shot in Dallas is, is like being shocked somebody was shot in Chicago or Detroit. Not a lot of difference. So could this have been just a normal liberal city with high crime killing? Who knows? Uh, it doesn't appear like from the reports, and again, you know, you can only report on what people are saying right now. What they say later may be different, but they're saying he was shot at close range and multiple times. So that's normally not a drive-by. Drive-bys are normally, there was a robbery and a guy across the street getting groceries was shot with, you know, a stray round. So that doesn't appear to be the case. So who would want this guy dead? Maybe the civil trial that he's about to do, if he's going to help the city, maybe the city wants him dead. Now, I mean, the mayor is automatically, immediately, uh, I'm sorry, the black mayor is automatically, immediately hollering, uh, this is a hate crime and it's probably a white guy. No evidence whatsoever, just automatically because he was involved in this trial. So Dallas is great about stirring up racial tensions and telling everybody how bad it is and Normally, you get half of the ignorant public believing it, and then they're out there protesting and believing what they're told because they can't think for themselves. But anyway, uh, some people ask, how does this affect the appeal? Well, it doesn't necessarily affect the appeal, but it can affect whether or not they appeal. There's some theories, and some people are saying, hey, why appeal a decision to where she's going to be out of prison in five years? She shot and killed somebody that was unarmed and she entered the wrong house. Five years might be a blessing in disguise. Does she want to risk another trial, the emotional stress, paying lawyer fees? What else might come out? Uh, a different jury that may convict her of more and give her more time. So if she appeals, she may end up doing 10 or 15 years. So, I mean, I don't think she's going to be convicted again. I think this jury got it wrong. They shouldn't have convicted her. I think the DA got lost up. I think they have a, a surefire appeal. That's not the question on whether or not they'll win. The question is whether or not they want to risk and throw the dice that she may get more than five years. She got 10 years, but she'll do five with good behavior. So five-year sentence may be a blessing, and they may not want to risk it. Uh, but as far as the appeal goes, I absolutely think they have 100% almost guaranteed they can get an appeal. Now, no appeal is easy. And it, it's tough. I get it. And, and there was a couple people saying ineffective counsel. Uh, the, the Her counsel was ineffective. And there was some guy that was a lawyer commenting saying, hey, those are really hard to win. Even when a lawyer fell asleep one time, they did not rule that it was ineffective counsel. How the hell can your lawyer be asleep during your trial and it not be ineffective counsel? Why do they even have ineffective counsel? What, does your counsel have to die in the middle of trial in order to get ineffective counsel? Probably not. They'll just put the body there and say, well, he could have been sleeping. You still have counsel. So that's that may not be the strongest appeal, but I think they have several appeals. Uh, you know, mob mentality, protests. They wouldn't give the change of venue. The jury was tainted. Some jurors were heard after the, giving the verdict that they had made up their mind before. Other jurors were commented, this is for Trayvon Martin, implying that we convicted her because we're still mad about Trayvon Martin which is totally inappropriate, and that's totally easy to get an overturn on that statement alone, probably. So uh, an appeal is not, I, people are wondering, you know, why, why wouldn't they appeal? Why wouldn't they? Well, the appeal, you can win the appeal, but what do you win? You win another chance at this crazy DA and this racist, hot, hostile environment, political environment, and you may not get as lucky as you get 10 years and only have to do five. So it's very hard to convince somebody to say that five years is a good deal. Look, you're only going to spend five years when she could be doing no time or she could get manslaughter with five to seven years. I mean, she'd be out in two years. 
and then she may get time served by the time the appeal and everything comes out. So she could get out two and a half years earlier. So from the the person's standpoint, they're always like, man, any chance of getting out earlier, I want to take normally. But the flip side of that is you may end up with longer. Now, if she got the max sentence and she was facing 20 years, then the appeal would be a no-brainer. We got appeal because we can only do better. We can only get less. We can't get more. But in this case, will they appeal? I don't know. That's up to them. Uh, will they win the appeal? I think they will. Will they win a second trial? That's where this witness comes in because this witness cannot testify. And since the defense can't cross-examine him, they can't put on his statements in the past. Now, there might be some exception for hearsay that somebody he told or something because he's dead. I, they're, they're always putting, you know, all these exceptions to the rules are just ways around the Constitution, kind of like vehicle searches exceptions and public safety exceptions and uh, because you're driving, we can search. An alcohol exception, we can we can stop you without reasonable cause and totally ignore the Fourth Amendment because of alcohol and you're driving a car. So they're always putting in exceptions. Uh, so anyway, a couple people asked me a couple questions on that. I don't know whether they're going to appeal or not. I think they'll win their appeal if they do. I don't know what the new trial will do. This witness being killed will obviously... Now, if they can prove that this witness was killed by somebody connected to Amber or the city to limit their exposure in the civil trial, then they could probably get that information into the civil trial and probably get a bigger settlement. But my guess is, and again, I'm just taking a swag, you know, a TLR, that looks about right. To me, this is another high crime Dallas drug infested whatever city that run by the liberals with high gun control that tells you how great they are, high taxes, going broke, uh, diversity is our strength. All the things that we're told is great if the whole country was like, this is what your large liberal cities get. A lot of people getting killed. So uh, that's my take on it. We'll end that there.